Hey guys, what's up? This is Ola and today we're just going to be having a look and doing an overview of uh, the first program we're going to be learning which is Photoshop. Uh, I think before actually going in and learning um, how the program works and everything else it's a good idea to take a step back and actually know what the program is good for. Now the program's called Photoshop so if you don't know much about it you might be fooled into thinking it's just a program for editing photos. But actually um, this is my portfolio, you can view it at imzola.com um, I'm just going to be going through some of the pieces of work and then we're going to be going through some examples of different things you can actually do with the program just to kind of show how powerful it is. I think the, the first thing you need to remember with Photoshop is that it's... I wouldn't call it a photo program, I would call it an image. It's a program for producing image in the simplest um, sense of the word. I use it for all the artwork I do. So this is uh, a cover I did for the Chainsmokers, the single Don't Let Me Down, which is out now. And I comped all this together in Photoshop, so um, th there's a kind of detailed picture here. Uh, I went into like a super like massive amount of detail with this. But this kind of thing, like uh, putting together all these elements I did in Photoshop, and I'll show you the file in a second. Um, so something like this would be done in Photoshop, but if we come backwards, um, what else do we have? Uh, something like this so even though these are like 3d renders uh, I guess the files are not massive here like the screenshots I guess I can zoom in a bit but these are 3d renders I did in cinema 4d but to actually add the glows and the lights and stuff again you would finish this in Photoshop so I think the first thing to remember is that Photoshop is a program that you should be using quite a lot in your digital production workflow whether it's just touching like curves up, uh, when I say curves I mean like the, the colours in a picture. If Even if you're just tweaking the colours of a, a photo you've taken or an image you found on the internet, you might find a picture like this but want to make it black and white or something like this. All this kind of stuff will go through Photoshop. So I've got some files open here in the program and I'm just going to run through those like real quick. So what this is, is uh, the little overlay that you can probably see at the bottom of the video now. And what I did here is I just created a simple, I grabbed some icon from the internet of YouTube, Twitter and Instagram and then just put my handles on each of those social medias and um, and then yeah it's a really simple file and if you see this checkerboard I'll explain all this later on, it just means that your file is going to be transparent which means I can drop these this kind of picture on top of my video and you'll be able to see my video behind it. And so this is like the, one of the most basic examples of how I would use Photoshop. I've just made a little overlay for my video. Like I said, you can probably see it at the bottom of your screen right now. Um, so moving on, here we have the artwork I just showed you on the website. And as you can see on the right here, I have um, a hell of a lot. These, these are called layers. So these are basically like everything that the program uh, has made up in terms of uh, what you see here is made up of all of these different layers and some of these are effects and some of these are pictures and you know elements and some of these are folders which if you twirl them down you can have a look and they they just feature even more pictures and stuff like that so uh yeah for producing an artwork like this for the chain smokers again this all comes through photoshop and this is just made up of lots of different elements which i put together and um you know, here we have, like, as an example, we have three filters. If you turn those off, they're just each applying a layer of color to this artwork. And again, we'll go through this when we get around to learning the program. But I just wanted to show uh, what we can do. Uh, here, here we have what is literally, so we have two layers. We have a bit of text and a background. But uh, for something like this, where you want to kind of, like, jazz your text up or whatever, um, you can come into these are layer styles and again I'll explain these when we get around to this but if you have a look at my text here I can just quickly change the way that my text look which is pretty cool and these are some presets that I made or downloaded I can't remember but I'll show you how to make these from scratch anyway and Photoshop comes with these like less exciting crappy ones which I've never used once I don't think I mean some of these are horrific but you know, if you if you do it properly, like you can see how stuff like this would be really cool. And then, if I change like the color of the text, uh, sorry, the font of the text, we can quickly like see this style of text in a million different fonts. 
and you can see how this would be powerful for creating banners maybe for um, your websites or your YouTube videos or whatever. Um, so that is another way in which I would use Photoshop, so just to come in and do simple things with text and that kind of stuff. Uh, this is how Photoshop can work with other programs. So what I have here is I've uh, generated this kind of like vortex, I guess, in another program. And we'll, we'll talk about like integrating uh, renders from like 3D programs into Photoshop and how we can bring those. But if I, if I have a look at the original, um, so what I'm going to do is hold this in a folder and turn off. This is the original render that I got out of the program that I made it in. Um, I wish I could tell you what program that was, but it's some kind of fractal software, I guess. Uh, and so this was the raw render, and I brought this into Photoshop, and then just from stacking up like effects and layers and stuff uh, one by one, so if I turn these off one by one, so we've gone from having, so we had this, and then I added another one, which is like just a duplicate of the same one, changed the colors a bit, did that again threw some curves on there through a color balance and then flattened it and then just darkened it again, really. That's all I've done. Um, and so, yeah, I use it for stuff like this. So this is what I was saying earlier about having a render or a picture that you like, but you kind of like want to enhance somewhat. And so that's what I've done here. And this ended up, I, I think I just flew this up on Instagram. I never actually did anything with it. I just thought it looked kind of cool. And um, it was just at a period where I was experimenting, which is what we're trying to do here. We're trying to give you the tools with which you can go ahead and experiment and stuff. So that's cool. And uh, this is uh, just a painting I did of uh, one of my favorite models from, she's, a, she's Australian, but she's from America. And uh, again, so this is how you could use the program in a completely different way. I'm going to bring this brush panel up here. I have this on, basically I have a two monitor set up. And what I'll do is as we're going through is I will set it all up so that it's all on this one screen so you can see what I'm doing. But um, basically, yeah, by um, you can kind of like also paint. So if people, if you're like more of a traditional painter, you can like use this um, program to just like paint pictures like I have here and stuff. So. There's, you know, that's another different use. So we, we've, and um, depending on the brushes and stuff, as you can see, I have a load of brushes here. And depending on the one I choose, I'll, and you know, we'll go through how to make brushes and stuff. I have this like nice one, which makes like ivy and stuff. And I use these quite a lot, depending on the work I'm doing. Uh, some of these I picked up from the internet. Some of them I made myself. This is a useful one for just adding birds into the distance and stuff, little people. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the program itself is really, really powerful and can be used for a ton of different things. And one of those things, obviously, last but not least, is opening photographs and editing photographs. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go to this file open. And here we have um, a raw photo, which has come straight out of my 7D camera. And I'm going to open that up here. Again, don't worry so much about what's going on here. I'm just kind of showing you um, how this works. And as you can see, I've fiddled with this already so um, don't worry so much about what I'm doing here this is just to show so this photo was taken on a shoot that we were on as you can see here we were shooting something and this is me and this is my friend Lev with which I started the company Impossible Brief uh, with which we do like lots of work for the chain smokers and other people um, so yeah this is us on set and this was just taken by someone who was doing behind the scenes photos uh, they were just tasked with taking a ton of photos while we were there. So, um, yeah, I can play with all the raw parameters of the photograph before I even bring it into the program. So you can change stuff like the contrast, uh, the highlights. So if we have a look here, like on the skin, like we don't want things to be blown out like here. We want to have as much detail as possible. So I'm going to bring the highlights all the way down. And then you can, again, with the shadows on the T-shirt here, you're going to want to have as much detail to play with as possible and I'll show you how all this works uh, when we get around to um, to playing with so what I would do is get the photo in like somewhere near the um, the way I would want it to look and not so much with the color but just in terms of like the balance between the lights and the darks and make sure I have as much detail here to work with as possible and uh, once I have that I would go to open image 
and here we have the photo inside Photoshop and then I could go about like here we have like uh, one of my grey hairs apparently on my shoulder which is quite worrying if you think about it but what I can do with the magic of Photoshop is remove that grey hair and we have some dust like here or there and like I can remove this dust and again like we'll get around to this when we uh, when we get around to uh, working with the program but this was just to show that we now have a photo in here and we can do all the usual editing stuff that you would associate with Photoshop which is like maybe adding some uh, you know like ch changing the colors around and maybe adding like a, a vintage feel to this so like if I lift the blues and like bring the highlights down so give it a kind of like Instagram filter look uh, if I go to the curves I'm doing all this off screen on my second monitor so don't freak out if you don't realize how I'm doing this um, but anyway yeah just just so you can bring it in and start messing about with it and then I don't know like add black and white make it look moody as hell um, so yeah there we have it you can definitely also edit photos in Photoshop no-brainer really so that is the overview of this program hopefully you've seen the kind of possibilities and you're excited about what we can do with it and yeah the next video like starting with the next video we'll be going in and actually learning how to learn uh, like work with the program and even if you've used the program before hopefully you will pick some stuff up and if you haven't then this is a great place to start because I'm literally going to be breaking down I think what we're going to do from the start is just like work with all these menus just make sure you know what's going on here, like what all these little things are, how to jump between various um, open comps in here, how to move things from uh, like one comp, so you can drag things from one file into the other if you want to do that, and how we would do that, and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, hopefully this has got you excited, and I'm going to stop waffling now. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow for the next video, or the first video, I guess. See ya.